Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is MTG Ghoul Dude and today we're going to delve into the the scary, the dark, the things that hide in the dark, the things you're scared of the most if you've done something wrong. What is that? That's an assassin around the corner waiting for you to just, just slip up just a little and not notice that he's right there. So with the spooky season among us, I wanted to do, you know, I wanted to do something a little scary. You know, not everybody's afraid of somebody that's going to come after them. But, you know, it's an afterthought most sometimes. So, let's go ahead and get into it. If this is the kind of content you like and you want to see more of it, always remember like, comment, and subscribe to let me know what tribe I should focus on next. So, without further ado, let's go on ahead and get into it. Start Starting off with Royal Assassin for 1 and 2 Black. It's a 1 1, and it, the text has been eroded, so it has the little tap symbol. But it says tap to destroy any tap creature. And Royal Assassins have been printed many a many a times. You can get this for way cheaper than what this alpha version is. But if you're looking for the OG, the original Assassin, this is it. All the way back from alpha. So, let's go on ahead and keep going. Next, going to Ramsey's Overdark. For two, two black and two blue, it's a 4-3, and it also has that ability, but instead of a creature, it has to have an enchantment on it. It has to be an enchanted creature only, which is very strange, but you never know when you're going to need to blow up, you know. We are in the, in the realm nowadays where, you know, we're going to enchant. Voltron is a little bit more of how many enchantments can you slap on a creature before it becomes something that you have to worry about. Or, if you just happen to be playing, you know, a curse deck. This could be good, because if you're playing, like, the Impetus Cycle, I mean, hey, there you go. It's it's a ch enchanted now. You can en you've enchanted it. And then you can destroy it. Alright, moving on to our next card. Merfolk Assassin for 2 blue. It's a 1-2, and it destroys Tark Creature that has Island Walk. Now, there is ways to give creatures Island Walk, but... But those are few, far, and in between. And this is from the dark. Those eyes are super creepy. And you can tell he was up to some no good with the, the ship in the background sinking. Abysmal Hunter for three and a black. It's a 1-1. One, one. But for a black, you can tap it and tap target creature. It deals, dam deals to that creature an amount of damage equal to its power. So if it's a 7-7, seven, seven, it deals 7 but you have to tap him, tap a black, and tap a creature. So, I mean, it's very unique in Mirage, during the Mirage times. But, you know, let's keep going to see what else we got. Necrotal for two and two black. It's a 2-1 with first strike. And when it comes into play, bury target non-artifact, non-black creature. That's basically saying destroy. Because back in the day, they used bury instead of destroy. Which still, for four mana, is not bad. I mean, we do have better creatures like the Ravenous Chupacabra that do the same thing. But if you're after a more tribal build, then this will be where it's at for you. Sunkata Assassin. I have no idea if I said that right or not. But we're going to keep going with it. For one and two black, it's a 1-1. One, one. It can't be blocked except for by artifact or black creature. So this is the precursor to fear that we know now today that's barely used anymore uh, when it attacks if it is not blocked if any player gets a poison counter if any player has ten or more poison counter he or she loses the game this is one of the very few cards you'll see that is non Phyrexian that has just no interest in just being like oh well he's not a human but he is and that's pretty darn interesting if you want to bring that up in a commander game. So it's like, oh, well, I'm not playing nothing. I'll play this Sequata Assassin. And then when it deals damage, it gives them a poison counter. It's pretty cool. King's Assassin for 1 and 2 black. It's a 1-1. One, one. And once your turn, before you attack, you may tap him to destroy any one tapped creature. So... This is back on the time where it they used tap creatures. The the tapping another creature to do an effect was an ability all in itself. As we've seen from the last couple that used other creatures to do to help with the murdering. 
Serpent Assassin for three and two black. It's a two two whenever it comes into play from your hand. You may choose to destroy any one creature that isn't black. So this is like a more expensive Oh, what is it? I can't think of it now. Go for the throat, I think. I think that's not an artifact. But still, I mean, if you're looking for a body that can destroy, and if you're just trying to just keep on hammering down on on your opponents, this could be another fit into those destroy creature decks. Stronghold Assassin for one and two black. It's a two one, and you can tap it and sacrifice a creature, destroy target non black creature, continuing the uh, destroy target non black. Uh, I don't know what the theme, I guess. I don't know. That's their their stick, I guess. Coming up to our first red assassin. It's Mog Assassin for two and a red. It's a two one. And you can tap it, flip a coin. If you win the coin flip, destroy target creature and opponent controls. Otherwise, destroy target creature of that opponent's choice. So pretty much if you don't win every time, you're pretty much going to lose them. Because people are going to start getting very upset at this creature. But the background is hilarious because you can see he is just smiling ear to ear and there's an explosion going on behind him. We Assassins for 3 and 2 black. It's a 3-2. When it comes into play, your opponent chooses one of their creatures and destroys that creature. It's actually pretty cool. Notorious Assassin for 3 and a black. It's a 2-2. Two, two. And for 2 and a black, you can tap it, discard a card from your hand, destroy target non-black creature. And this is back when regeneration started getting big in Magic. Because it gives the can't be regenerated claws. Silent Assassin. For two, just two black. It's a 2-1. And for four mana, three and a black. You need to destroy a target blocking creature at the end of combat. So if you have enough mana at any point in time, you can just be like, alright, well, that creature dies. And they don't have, they can't, there's nothing they can say about it. It's just because it was blocked. Because it blocked. Rothy Assassin for 2 and 2 black. It's a 2-2 two, two, and it has two abilities. The first ability says you can tap 1 and 2 black. And tap it and destroy target tap non-black creature. But for three mana and tapping it, you can search your library for a mercenary card. When mana mana costs three or less, and put that card into play, then shuffle your library. So if you're also playing a mercenary deck, it's a good, it's a good run. Sabo's Assassin for two and two black. It's a one one. This is a rare. This is a rare. Let me tell you what this rare does. You can tap it, destroy target creature if it shares a color with the most common color among all permanents, or the color tied for the most common. And it can't be regenerated. So it de highly depends on. Okay, so this is red. I got to destroy the biggest, one of the most red things. This is, the, there's more blue. I got to destroy a blue thing. It's not something that you can actually just point at and say, you, it dies, it's dead, it goes away. Which is unfortunate for four mana. Stalking Assassin for one in a blue and a black. It's a one one and it has two abilities. For three and a blue, you can tap target creature. Three and a black, you can tap it and destroy target tap creature. So if it's before your turn, hey, hey that dude's tapped. Oh no, come to my turn. Hey, that dude died. <laughs> I wonder what happened. Stronghold Assassin. I do believe I've already got this one. But this is a different art. And I'm not going to lie, it's not that bad. Zombie Assassin. Probably the weirdest one on here, but I also don't like what's going on in the art. Because in the bottom right hand corner of the art box, that is Chainer before he uh, he died to do his own uh, hubris. But let's get into Zombie Assassin and not the story of Chainer, because that's a story I could go on forever with. For four and a black, it's a 3-2, and you can tap it and remove two cards in your graveyard and zombie assassins from the game, and you can destroy target non-black creature. And I love this card 
simply for its flavor text. This is not a great card by any means, but I do love the flavor text. Zombies don't kill. They recruit, which is fairly, it's completely accurate. Goblin Assassin for 3 and 2 red. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever it or another goblin comes into play, each player flips a coin. If each player whose coin comes up tails sacrifices a creature. Which, in this... In a deck, you want to run this. You're going to be wanting to run a bunch of tokens. And what do goblins do? They make a bunch of tokens. Which is pretty cool. Because if you can make enough tokens, like say with a Krinko... But it's also bad because if you make a bunch of tokens with Krinko with this on the board, you got to start flipping. Ooh, yeah, that's rough. Kiku Knight's Flower for two black. It's a 1-1. One, one. Human Assassin. This is when they started getting real specific. Uh, for two generic and two black, the ability to tap target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Which could be useful if they're not indestructible or they have a larger butt than they do power that's that could be bad orzov enthusiast for two and a black it's a two two with haunt when this die when this card is put into a graveyard from play remove it from the game haunting target creature when it comes into play or the creature it haunts is put into a graveyard destroy that creature that was dealt damage this turn and that's let me look at something for a second. I need to get my barons. Okay. Yeah. To me, I I mean, this is in a, a decent effect for three, but I mean, you have to find a way to two for one your opponent. I don't know. I'm racking my brain trying to figure out how to make this work, but... It doesn't to me because, I mean, it works, but it's just so odd. Oh, that's such a weird mechanic. Unliving Psychopath for two and two black. It's a zero four, and it has two abilities. You can tap a black to give it plus one, minus one until end of turn, and then tap a black and tap it. Destroy target creature with power less than Living Psychopath's power. So it could only be three. So that's not as bad, but it's a continuous just kill spell for the small creatures. Graza's Assassin for three black. It's a 2-2. Two, two, and you can sacrifice it to destroy target non-black creature. But you can also recover. You can pay half, half your life. Round it up. And whenever you do, whenever another creature is put into your graveyard from play, you may pay half your life, round it up. If you do, return this card from your graveyard to your hand. Otherwise, remove this card from the game. So you have to do it as soon as the next creature dies. Because if not, it's gone forever. Big Game Hunter. For 1 and 2 black, it's a 1-1. One, one. When it comes into play, destroy a target creature with power 4 or greater. It can't be regenerated. But it also has a Madness ability. So if you're in a Madness deck, you can throw it away and then say hey I didn't mean to do that but wait I have more and you pretty much just play it and for a black and destroy something huge hunter of oblites for three and two black it's a three three elf assassin when it comes into play put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature you don't control and then you can tap two generic and a black and tap hunter of oblites and destroy target creature with a counter on it. Counters are starting getting starting to get synonymous with commander. If they're if you're playing a game of four, you're more unlikely to find a counter deck than you are an infect deck, especially because infects less. It's not. It's a little bit more frowned upon than counters, and counters can be in any and every color. You would be surprised how many different color counter decks you can come up with final sting fairy for three and a black it's a two two with flying and when it comes into play destroy to our creature that was dealt damage this turn scar blade elite for two black it's a two two and you can tap it remove an assassin card in your graveyard from the game and destroy target creature this is where we start getting into where 
the it's a non stipulation to destroy. You could just be like, all right, it's a card from the graveyard. It's gone. Exile it and destroy target creature. Weed prune poplar. I think that's how it said. For four and a black, it's a three three at the beginning of your upkeep target creature other than weed prune or poplar. That's a tongue twister. Say that ten times fast. Gets a minus one, minus one to under turn. So uh, if you're going against a bunch of small token decks, they're not going to be a lot of them for long. Murderous Red Cap. Now, I had this one in a competitive, working into a competitive deck for a long time. And I would still play it, except for this dude is just creepy. Like, them eyes, though. And you can't see their mouth either. You can just see their nose and what I'm guessing is a tooth popping up. Or maybe that's just, like, their face. I don't know, but that dude is creepy looking. But I love it at the same time. So, Murderous Red Cap for two and two hybrid black or red. It is a 2-2 two -two Goblin Assassin. When it comes into play, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player, and it has Persist. When this creature is put into a graveyard from play, if it had no minus one, minus one counters on it, return it to play under its owner's control with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Yeah, I had this in my Chainer deck that as I was powering it up. But I also had this one in a Corvold Goblin Tribal deck, and I was able to put, you know, just easily manipulate the counters to where I could just keep going and sacrificing it. Of course, I'd have to sacrifice Corvold, or I'd deck myself, but still a good aesthetic. Thraxamundar. Thraxamundar. I don't, I think that's how it says. I love the art on this one. It's just a crazy zombie flying, looks like he's going way too fast. Or maybe he's just crazy because he can he can be. But for four, a black, and a blue, and a red, it's a 6-6 six, six legendary creature zombie assassin with haste. When he attacks, defending player sacrifices a creature. When a player sacrifices a creature, you may put a counter on Thraxamundar. And his flavor text is really good. It says his name means he who paints the earth red. And I love it. Ghoul Draws, Gull Draws Assassin. It's pretty different. For a single black, it is a level up creature, Vampire Assassin. So f to level it up, it's for each level. you. So it's at level one, you pay one and a black, it goes to level two. You pay a one and a black again, it gets to level three. And the higher it goes, after level four, it doesn't get any bigger, but it starts becoming a minus four minus. It starts becoming a single language on a stick. Dark Imposter for two and a black. It's a 2-2 two, two Vampire Assassin. For four and two black, you can exile target creature and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So this is exile any creature. Just on the board, Eldrazi, anything. And it has all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with it. So if you can find a way to just start exiling all the good creatures, you don't have to worry about any of the other good creatures. Because you have the best creature on in one. Thrill Kill Assassin. This is one of those Rakdos girls. And they are dangerous. For one in a black, it's a 1-2 with Death Touch and Unleash. You may have this creature enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. It can't block as long as it has a counter on it. Oh, and this one actually calls to a creature we will see later on. A character we will see later on in this series. This is a very small series. Part 1 of 2, this one is. But the flavor text reads, As the bounty on Massacre Girl rose, so did the number of imitators. <laughs> I guess. I can't. Maybe I, I can't English today. I'm sorry. Agent of Fates. And this is another one of the arts for assassins that I really like. Because it looks like he's mind controlling the whole... Off, what, three, four, five, six, seven blades with one still on him. But for one and two black, it's a three-two with death touch. And it has heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets agent of fates, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So if you're in a... Just a spammy, you know... Instant sorcery target deck, you know, that's a, a good just start wiping boards if you got enough in hand. 
Cruel Sadist for one black. It's a 1-1, one, one, and you can tap it and pay a black, pay one life, put a counter on Cruel Sadist. Then you can tap two generic and a black, tap it, remove X plus one plus one counters from it, and deal X damage to target creature. That's actually pretty cool. There's a lot of these I haven't seen or haven't seen in a while or never paid attention to, but this the flavor text on this one is pretty neat. Zathrid's Slyblade. That's a different one. So for two and a black, it's a 2-1 Hexproof, which is actually pretty good for black. And for three and a black, until end of turn, it loses Hexproof and gains First Strike and Death Touch. So you can give it, you know, more deadly stuff. Oh, oh I get it. So when you pay the ability, it becomes visible. Like you, it is now leaping in for the attack. But it loses the Hexproof because... It's no longer hidden. It's pretty cool. And now we're back at the beginning. So that's going to be it for today, everybody. I really appreciate everybody that watches, likes, and subscribed. We did end up hitting 130 subscribers. Like I knew we would. So let's see how far we can get. Let's keep it going. But that will be it for today, everybody. I I, I really appreciate everybody that watches, likes, comments, and I can't, I just, I, I can't say it enough. I can't wait to see how far we can go. But that is it, and I will see you guys next time in the graveyard.